Hello, this is Dr. Minde. We continue with the lecture series on the mediastinum. So we had left it at the posterior contents of the mediastinum actually, and we were discussing the azygous and the hemiazygous venous system. So remember we say that the azygous system is formed by the right ascending lumbar and the right um, subcostal, while the inferior hemiazygous is formed by the left ascending um, lumbar and the left subcostal. So from the image, you can appreciate that azygous um, is formed by right ascending lumbar and the subcostal vein. Then it has tributaries from the fourth to 11th posterior intercostal veins and second to third um, intercostal veins that will join it before it empties in the superior vena cava. Other tributaries include esophageal veins, pericardial veins, right bronchial veins, as well as superior and inferior hemiazygous draining into the azygous. Hemiazygous is we have superior and inferior. So inferior hemiazygous is formed by the union of left ascending lumbar and left subcostal, and the tributaries include 9th to 11th posterior intercostal veins, while the superior hemiazygous is um, has the tributaries from the 4th to 8th posterior intercostal veins and all these drain into the azygous vein. The first um, intercostal veins drain into the brachycephalic tract, the left and the right correspondingly. The second and the third um, intercostal veins will drain on the brachycephalic trunk on the left, while they unite on the right to drain into the azygous vein before it terminates on the superior vena cava. The azygous vein terminates at the superior vena cava at the sternal angle of at the junction between superior and inferior mediastina. So basically that's the overview of the azygous system when they ask you to write an essay on the azygous system. So as we have said that the azygous vein is in the posterior mediastinum and the origin is by union of right ascending lumbar and subcostal veins. Usually it passes through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. Azygous vein terminates as an arc above the root of the right lung ends at the superior vena cover and this is at the sternal angle of Louis to T4-T5 junction at the plane that divides superior and inferior uh, mediastinum. What are the relations of azygous vein? Anteriorly we said the esophagus, posteriorly the thoracic vertebra, to the right you have the right lung and pleura and to the left you have the thoracic duct. What are the tributaries of the azygous? Superior and inferior hemiazygous veins drain into the azygous the right superior intercostal vein, the right posterior intercostal vein, which uh, from the fourth to the eleventh intercostal spaces, and the right brachial veins, esophageal veins, and pericardial veins. The hemiazygous is divided into inferior and superior. The inferior originates from the union of left ascending lumbar and subcostal veins. It passes through the left cruise of the diaphragm. What's the termination of inferior hemiazygous? Into the azygous vein opposite T8 vertebra. The tributaries of inferior hemiazygous include the left posterior intercostal veins, which are from 9th to 11th intercostal spaces, as well as esophageal veins. So, um, the superior hemiazygous is also in the posterior mediastinum. It originates from left posterior intercostal veins in the 4th to 8th spaces, intercostal spaces, and terminates in the azygous vein, but opposite T7. Inferior hemiazygous terminated opposite T8 vertebra. What are the tributaries of the superior hemiazygous? You have the left brochure veins mainly. Inferior vena cava is also within the mediastinum, the posterior mediastinum, and it, end, it usually passes through the vena cava opening. It ends by... Um, it passes through the vena cava opening of the diaphragm, then it terminates at the right atrium behind the right sixth costal cartilage. Remember, what forms the inferior vena cava? When you have common iliac veins, right and left common iliac joining, they form the inferior vena cava, and this passes through the vena cava opening of the diaphragm from the abdomen through vena cava opening of the diaphragm into the posterior mediastinum of the thorax, and then it terminates. In, uh, in the middle mediastinum by opening into the right atrium of the heart. So which arteries are found in the posterior, in the mediastinum? So you have the ascending aorta, which is in the middle mediastinum. 
Ascending aorta is in the middle mediastinum. It originates at the base of the left ventricle. Remember, it carries blood from the left ventricle. Ascending aorta terminates at the um, it terminates at the plane that divides the mediastinum into two. So it will ascend upwards, forwards to the right, and continues as the arc of aorta. So termination of ascending aorta is the origin of the arc of aorta, which occurs at the plane from sternal angle to T4, T5. What are the branches of the aorta, the ascending aorta? You have the right and left coronary arteries that go to supply the heart. Those are the branches of the ascending aorta. From the ascending aorta, we have the arc of the aorta. This is located in the superior mediastinum. It is a continuation of the ascending aorta, and it begins at the plane, at the sternal angle of Louis to T45 junction, and terminates at the same plane by continuing as the descending aorta, which is the thoracic part of the aorta first. So the arc of the aorta is formed by the termination of ascending aorta, and um, it terminates at the formation of the descending aorta. And all this formation of uh, the beginning and the end of the arc of aorta is at the plane at the sternal angle of Louis to T4, T5 junction. The arc of aorta has three major branches, the brachiocephalic trunk that gives right common carotid and right subclavian. Then you have the left common carotid as a second branch and the left subclavian. These branches are located in the superior mediastinum. Then from the descending aorta, we, from the arc of the aorta, we have the descending aorta that originates from the sternal angle of Louis to T4, T5 junction as a continuation of the arc of the aorta. Then the descending aorta, the first part in the posterior mediastinum, we call it thoracic aorta. Then after it enters through the, the aortic opening in the diaphragm, it continues in the abdomen as abdominal aorta. So the aortic opening of the diaphragm is opposite T12 vertebra. So it's at T12. Remember, the vena caval opening, vena caval opening is at T8, the esophageal opening is at T10, and the aortic opening is at T12. So thoracic aorta, after passing through the aortic opening of the diaphragm, it continues as abdominal aorta. Then usually at L4, L5 junction, it, abdominal aorta will terminate by dividing into two common iliac arteries, the right and the left. What are the relations of the descending aorta? Anteriorly is the esophagus. Posteriorly is the thoracic vertebra. This is the position of the descending aorta in the posterior mediastinum. So the relations in the posterior mediastinum, you have the esophagus anterior to it, you have the thoracic vertebra posterior to it, onto it, the right side of the descending aorta is the thoracic duct, and on the left side of the descending aorta is the left pleura and lungs. What are the branches of thoracic aorta? You have posterior intercostal arteries from the third to 11th intercostal spaces. You have the subcostal arteries, bronchial arteries to the lungs, esophageal arteries to the esophagus, and pericardial arteries to the heart. So these are the branches of the thoracic aorta. Posterior intercostals from third to 11th intercostal spaces, subcostal arteries, esophageal arteries, bronchial arteries and pericardial arteries. Then another artery in the mediastinum is the pulmonary trunk, which is located in the middle mediastinum, where it carries blood from the heart, so it is in the middle mediastinum. Origin, it's from the upper part of the right ventricle. It carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the, um, to the lungs. So it will ascend upwards and to the left, then divides at the lower border of T4. It's going to divide into um, right and left pulmonary artery. So again, this is an event that is occurring at the sternal angle of Louis. So, so far we've mentioned five events. Sternal angle of Louis, that's where insertion of the second rib occurs. At the sternal angle of Louis, it's where we join T4, T5 to divide the mediastinum into superior and inferior. At the sternal angle of Louis, the azygous vein was joining superior, emptying into superior vena cava. At the sternal angle of Louis was the termination of ascending aorta and the beginning of descending aorta, or the beginning and termination of the arc of the aorta. Now we are saying that at the sternal angle of Louis, another event is pulmonary trunk is dividing into right and left pulmonary arteries. The trachea is also located in the mediastinum. So what's the origin of the trachea? It's a continuation of the larynx opposite the C6 vertebra. 
So it originates opposite C6 vertebra as the continuation of the larynx. It terminates by bifurcating into two bronchi, again at the sternal angle of Louis. So between the plane from T4, T5 to sternal angle of Louis, another event, the trachea bifurcates into two bronchi. What are the relations of the trachea? In the superior mediastinum, anterior to the trachea, you'll see the arc of the aorta, the brachiocephalic trunk, and the left common carotid artery. So the arc of aorta and its branches are anterior to the trachea in the superior mediastinum. Posterior to the trachea is the left recurrent laryngeal nerve and the esophagus. Posterior to the trachea is the esophagus, and in between trachea and esophagus is the left recurrent laryngeal nerve in the tracheoesophageal groove. To the right of the trachea in the superior mediastinum, you find the right vagus nerve, and to its left, you find the arc of the aorta and left subclavian artery. What's the nerve supply of the trachea? You have sympathetic trunks and vagus nerve that give it parasympathetic innervation. What's the blood supply of the, um, in, uh, of the trachea in the superior mediastinum? You have the inferior thyroid vessels, and inferior thyroid vessels come from the thyro, um, thyrocervical trunk, which is from the first part of the subclavian artery. The lymphatic drainage of the trachea is by pretracheal and paratracheal lymph nodes. So when you're asked to write an essay of the trachea about the relations in the superior mediastinum, the nerve supply, blood, and lymphatic drainage, that's, this is what you're supposed to discuss. Then the esophagus is also con uh, seen in the superior mediastinum and in the posterior mediastinum. So it is a continuation of the pharynx at opposite C6. Trachea was continuation of larynx opposite C6. Esophagus is continuation of pharynx opposite C6 vertebra. And the esophagus, it terminates by passing through esophageal opening of the diaphragm, which is at T10. And thereafter, at T11, it, it joins the stomach. So remember, when a cable opening at the diaphragm is at T8, esophageal opening is at T10, while aortic opening is at T12. So esophagus will pass through T10, esophageal opening of the diaphragm at T10 and joins the stomach. What are the relations of the esophagus? In the superior mediastinum, the esophagus in the superior mediastinum, what are the relations? Anterior to the esophagus, you find the trachea and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve in the tracheoesophageal group, as well as the left subclavian artery. Posterior to the esophagus, you find the thoracic vertebra. Then to the right of the esophagus, you find right pleural and the lung. And to the left, you see the thoracic duct and the left pleural and lung. Within the posterior mediastinum, the pericardium and its contents are anterior to the esophagus. So the pericardium separates the esophagus from the left atrium of the heart. Posterior to the esophagus in the posterior mediastinum is the thoracic duct descending aorta and azygous vein. Those three structures are posterior to the esophagus, thoracic duct, descending aorta, and azygous vein. To the right is the right pleura and lung, and to the left is the left pleura and lung, as well as the descending aorta. What's the nerve supply of the esophagus? You have sympathetic uh, nerves, as well as vagus, giving it parasympathetic innervation. The esophagus has a longitudinal anastomosis, which arteries form the longitudinal anastomosis of the esophagus. The cervical portion is supplied by um, inferior thyroid arteries, which are from first part of subclavian. The thoracic portion is supplied by posterior intercostal arteries, which are from thoracic aorta. Then the abdominal part is supplied by left gastric artery, which comes from the celiac trunk, which is from the abdominal aorta. So those form the longitudinal anastomosis of the esophagus. In the thorax, apart from um, posterior intercostal vessels. It also gets branches from bronchial arteries, pericardial vessels, mediastinal vessels from the thoracic aorta. So there are many vessels that participate in this longitudinal anastomosis of the esophagus. Cervical region, inferior thyroid artery. Thoracic region, you have esophageal vessels from the aorta. The thoracic aorta also gives bronchial vessels, pericardial vessels, mediastinal vessels that supply the thoracic part of the esophagus. And we also have posterior intercostal arteries from the thoracic aorta that supply the thoracic esophagus. Venous drainage of, oh, sorry, the um, abdominal portion of the esophagus is by low, uh, left gastric from celiac trunk. 
Venous drainage of the esophagus is by azygous and the hemiazygous venous system, while the lymphatic drainage is by posterior mediastinal lymph nodes.